What's up YouTube? In this video, we'll be building out this responsive lander. I designed this for an upcoming tutorial I'll be creating with interactions. So um, here we're just gonna build out the structure and make it responsive in Webflow. So I'll start by heading over to Webflow. I have this project. I'll leave a link to the Figma file in the description below. Um, I'll start by going over to variables and setting up uh, the different color variables here. So I can grab this whole page. This is the background color of it. I'll head back to Webflow, add in a color variable, and I'll just call this dark, and I'll paste in the hex code. I'll add another one for light, and that can just be white. And then I'll have another one for brand, and I'll go grab this hex code here. And I'll come back over, paste this in. And then I also want to save in here the color of this uh, outline because I'll be using that for these borders here. So I believe that is just a white at 12% opacity. So I can just call this something like border color and I can set that to white 12% opacity. So we'll have that set there. Let's head to the body. I'll go to body all pages tag and I'll set the background color to dark. I'll set the font color to light and I'll go ahead and set the font to formula and normal and then that's pretty much it for that part. So I can start by building out the nav. I'll drop in a div and I'll change the settings to tag it as nav and we can check out the um, the padding on the nav. So if we check out this nav here, it has some padding of 22 pixels on all sides. So we can just come back over here. I'll call this something like nav wrap and I'll do 22 divided by 16 REM and I'll hit shift enter to apply to all sides. And then we have the logo here. So I'm gonna right click in Figma and copy as SVG. And I'll be using this Webflow app called SVG Import. So it can just launch this, click in here and paste. And it should just paste in uh, my SVG like so. And I can just call this uh, nav logo. And we can go grab the, the width on our logo is 42 pixels. So I'll do 42 divided by 16 REM, that sets the width. And then I should be able to just set the font color to be brand, and that's just good to go. Uh, I'll drop in a button element inside the nav. Let me just pin this so we can see. I'll call this uh, button, and I'll give it a background color of the brand color and a font color, like so. And let's see. It should say shop now. Let's see what the radius is. It is seven pixel radius. So I'll come back over here, change out the text to say shop now. Let's give it that seven pixels divided by 16 rim. And that's our border radius. Let's select the nav wrap and apply flex, align center, and justify to space apart like so. And then let's set the padding inside the button. It looks like this is, if I grab that text, I'm holding option and hovering to see from the sides, about 21 pixels, 22 pixels off the side and about 12 or 14. So I'll do 22. I'm using the Lumos Chrome extension so I can hit spacebar enter and it's just a shortcut for dividing by 16. And I'll hold uh, option enter to do the other sides and then 12 space enter and then that's 12 pixels off top and bottom. So then for the border width on the bottom of the nav, it's set to one pixel. I want to use that same border width for these panels here and anywhere else I have a border width applied. So I will save that in a variable. If we head to variables, I'll create a size variable. I'll call this border width main. So that way we have a border width folder, value of main, and set it to one pixel for now. And so now I can grab the nav and I can give it some bottom border, set the border width to border width main and the border color to this border color variable like so. 
So once we have that set, I should be good to, um, let's see, let's come back over to Figma. Let's give the nav a background color and just pulling up chat real quick so I can see anything. Uh, let's give the nav a background color. I'll say background dark. Let's give it a position of sticky and it'll be zero pixels from the top. So it stays with us while we scroll and let's give it a Z index of a thousand. So it's on top, everything underneath it. And we're also going to have these lines that need to stay with us while we scroll and they need to be on top of all the content like so. So to do that, I'll just have a div in here. I'll call this something like line wrap and I'll give this a position of fixed to the top of the screen, give it a height of 100 VH. And then inside that I'll drop a div and I'll call this line. We'll call it something like line panel. And this can just have a width of 100%, height 100%, and it can have a border of our border width and a border color of our border color on the right. And then we should be good to just duplicate these panels till we have five of them. And we can grab this line wrap and apply flex to it so all the panels go side by side. And that way we have these five panels. This last one, we don't want to see the border color there, so I'll just give this a combo of last. And that way we can grab this border and detach the border color and then change the border color to transparent only for this last panel. And then this is going to be covering the content underneath it, so we can't really click underneath. So to fix that, we can grab this whole line wrap and set uh, events none so that it's not clickable. And I'll give it a Z index so it's right underneath the nav of 999 since the nav's a thousand. Um, so that's good there. And we have our panels and they're fixed so they'll stay with us while we scroll. Um, underneath those panels, we should have this little progress bar guy. Uh, this is just a bar that's gonna fill up the screen while we scroll. Um, so if we head back, to Webflow, let me drag this back up. I'll just drop in a div and I'll call this something like progress bar. And I'll give this a position of fixed to the bottom left of the screen. And I'll just for now give this a height of 10 pixels, 10 divided by 16 rim, and a width of 50% and a background color of brand. So that'll just animate from zero to 100% width while we scroll and it'll stay in view. I'll put it right underneath the lines. So it'll be 998 for the Z index. And that should be good for that part. So then we have this hero section here and really all it has is just this logo in it. So I'll right click copy as SVG, head back to Webflow and I'll drop in a section I'll call this hero section. And I want to save the left and right padding here um, in a variable so we can reuse that across different breakpoints, change it however we'd like. So I'm just going to create a variable and this will be a size variable. I'll just call this page padding main. And I'll just set it to three viewport width. So this padding will scale with the browser width since there's no max width container in this design, it'll just scale up infinitely. And we can grab this hero section and I'll just link its padding on all sides to this page padding main. Um, so it's top, bottom, it's right here and the bottom, all sides there. And then inside this hero section, I want to add in the logo. So I'll just launch SVG import, click to paste it in. And then I'll give this a hero logo class and I'll set the font color on it to be brand. So that's our SVG with all of the pieces. Um, so that's that part. Let's drop in another section. And this one's going to be for this section here. So I'll just call this products and let's go ahead and drop, we'll call this something like product section. 
And and I'll set this to, let's just drop in a div first. I'll create the left side of this. We'll call this product um, header. And we want this to occupy two of the five columns. So I'm just gonna set the width to two divided by five times 100%, and that'll be 40%. So that's occupying two of those columns there. Then I can drop another div in here and I'll call this product um, list. And I want this to occupy three of the columns. So three divided by five times 100% is just 60%, like so. And then I can grab the whole section and apply flex so that these two stack side by side, the products list and header. And inside the header, I'll drop in a text block and I'll call this uh, product and I'll call this um, heading. And I can go ahead and give it a color of brand. And I wanna grab this whole header and give it some left and right padding using this uh, page padding main, just like so. And let's go ahead and copy this text, latest fashion. Okay. And then inside of this, we'll have these different items here inside this list. So I think what I can do for that is head back inside the list, create a div, or actually I'm gonna use a link since these will be clickable. And I'll just call this product link. And let's give it a width of 100%. And inside that link, let's go ahead and drop an image element. And let's choose an image from here. I'll say image one. So I want this image to take up one of the three columns. Uh, so let's call this, first of all, product image. Um, so I'll say one divided by three times 100%. And there it's taking up one of the three columns there. And then I want it to not occupy any space in here. So I'm going to switch this to position absolute, which means this link here needs to be relative. And then I'll apply uh, flex to the link. Layout flex, align and justify center. So that image is right there in the middle of the link. It's not taking any space and that's good. So now inside that uh, product link, I'll have a product content. And this can just span 100% width of the available space. Inside that, we'll have a text block. And I'll just call this product title. And then I'll have oops, another text block. Let's see. Let's drop in a text block here. And we'll call this product. Uh, number. So then we can grab the content, apply flex, align center, and justify to space them apart. And we'll want to give this product content div a position relative so it sits on top of the image. And then our link here has that blue color by default, so I'll just set it to, um, I'll go to all links for now and set it to text decoration none so we get rid of those underlines and I'll set the color to be light. So we have that there. Um, and if we grab this uh, title here, let's just uh, copy this text. Oops, is that an SVG? I think I accidentally made this into an SVG. Let me undo. Let's see, There, there's some text though. All right, so I can copy this. That's 48 pixels and yeah, medium, so that's good. I'll just throw this in. Hats, we'll change this to be 01. And we wanna give this content a little bit of padding off this side. So we'll add our page padding main. And we wanna give probably this whole thing some top and bottom padding of looks like 30 pixels. So we can head back here and I'll just say 30 divided by 16 rim and add that to both sides, top and bottom. And let's give the whole link a bottom border of the border width. And if we reset the color, it'll just inherit from the font color of that link. 
so that way the um, it's white. And then let's see, I believe we, I'll just set this to two rim for now. Uh, the line height I'll set on the body, body all pages. Let's do a 1.4 dash, so it's a unitless line height, and we'll set the default font size on the body to one rim, so that all text is coming from that. Um, yeah, and then this title can just back down to one line height. So that is the link. Let's duplicate that and let me just see what the different, so we have sweaters, jackets, and classes. Let's just throw that in real quick. Sweaters, O2. Jackets, O3. And then duplicate the link again. And this one is glasses, 04. And let's just change out the images. So we have two, we have three, and we have four. Perfect. All right, and then since this image is a percent, it's going to be scaling with the size of the screen, the width of the screen. Um, so what I'll probably do is set the top and bottom padding on this product section using viewport width for now. Um, that way when the image scales up, it's never extending past these this bounds of this section here. So it'll scale. The padding is responsive just like the image. So that part should be good. Um, Yep, that all looks good. And then we can build out this next part here. Um, we have this little, the spinning thing, it's just gonna spin SVG, and it needs to occupy two columns like so. And I'll just go ahead and copy as SVG. We'll head back here. I'll just drop in a div and call this SVG wrap and I can set the wrap to 40% width, so it occupies the two columns. And inside that wrap, I can drop the SVG. So let's just paste it in. And I'll call this SVG element. And let's see, we want the font color of this SVG to be dark. So all the letters, everything inside is dark. And then this first path is the circle. So I'll call this SVG circle and I'll set the font color on that to be brand. So that part's brand, all the other pieces are dark. And then we can just grab this. We wanna set the width on this SVG based on the width of its parent. So this parent here is 576 pixels. The SVG is 191. So I can do 191 divided by 576 times 100 percent and that should give us the right size on that SVG. And I'll just grab the whole wrap and set it to a height of zero pixels and apply flex to center that so the SVG is right there in the middle like so. And after that we can drop in a section and we'll call this um, We'll just call this image section and it can give it some padding, I guess, like so. I'm just gonna throw some bottom padding of 100 VH on it for now, just so we can see underneath this. And then inside that, I'll drop in a div. I'll call this image wrap and it needs an aspect ratio of whatever this ratio is. So we have 1360 and 755. So we can just give this a custom ratio of 13.6 by a height of 7.55. And that's our ratio. I'll set this to position relative overflow hidden. Inside that, I'll add an image and I can just call this image element It'll have a width of 100%, a height of 120%, and a fit of uh, cover. 
and it's just taller than this parent so that way we can create a parallax effect and move it up. And then I'll set this to this image here. I'll set it to auto load. Sometimes when some of your image is being cropped off and it's set to lazy load, it never loads in. So it's just best if some of your image is being cropped to set it to auto load. And then I'll grab this whole SVG wrap and give it a position relative, Z index two. So it sits on top of the image. And then I'm also gonna have sort of this uh, color that whenever you scroll in, it wipes up like so to zero, but it's covering the image by default. So that can just go inside the image wrap. We can drop an image cover. It can be position absolute to the top and it can have a height of whatever we want. I'll just say 5% for now, but it'll animate from height 100% to height zero. Uh, so that's good. Um, yeah, that, that all seems right. So then from there, it's just a matter of making this responsive. So on this section, I'm gonna want these two things to stack under each other. So what I should have done on desktop is on this product section, allow wrapping so that when this child gets wider, they'll just automatically stack. So then all I had to do here on tablet is make this go 100% width and it'll automatically put the thing under it um, to go underneath. So now this can go 100% width also. And then there's no hover interaction on mobile. So I want these images to just always be visible. Um, so I'll just set this to relative and I'll give this a, let's set it to don't shrink or grow because it's gonna be squished by the text otherwise. I can back the width of this down, maybe make it take up one column, and then let's grab the whole link and let's give it some left and right padding of our uh, page padding main, like so. And I can remove this padding here. Let's detach it and let's zero it out on that side. And then I'll probably just add gap on this product link of one rim, just so it's spaced between. And that's good. Uh, on the product link itself, I might add, probably should have added this padding here that was on this content. Um, I should have added that to the link itself. So let me remove it from the content and add it to the link. One rim, there we go. And that way when things stack here, it just naturally has that right padding in between the links. Um, so that's looking good. Um, then this I might want to make a bit wider or something just for now. Um, this can all stay the same. I might increase the, this, set this to like a rim so it doesn't scale. Let's, uh, detach something like, um, three rim is good. And then here I might set this to, um, hmm, two rim just to space it out pretty evenly. So that's good there. Um, this is this is gonna get too small, this SVG. So what I'll do is give it a, let's see, let's give it a rim width, something like uh, eight rims fine. And then let's give it a max width of 70% of its container just to make sure it never touches the edge of the screen. It has some kind of bounds there. Uh, so for the most part, it'll be eight rim. And then once it hits that max, it'll start shrinking down like so. So that's good. On this breakpoint, I'll probably wrap the, or actually instead of wrap, just switch it to vertical like so. That way the image goes on top and then I can set this image to 100% width so that it does that kind of thing. Yep, that's good, 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 cool. That's all looking good. And on probably, so before I had the, had this going a little bit past the edge, uh, so a smaller padding in the design, but here on mobile, I'll probably just want the nav to match the padding of everything else. So I'll switch the nav's padding to page padding main at least on the sides. Um, that way it's perfectly lined up while that padding shrinks. That's good. And yeah, I think that 
should be fully responsive. Let me grab this image wrap and let me increase the height on the image wrap a bit on this breakpoint, just so it's a little bit taller, not getting too lost. Yep, and that looks good. Yeah, so my next tutorial probably will be just adding interactions to this type of layout, but that wraps up how to build it all, and I hope you've enjoyed following along. Um, also, Merry Early Christmas to everyone. <laughs> Thanks everyone, I'm reading the comments now. Yeah, this video will still be live after the stream, so thank you all. Um, I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks for joining and